Alright. Hello YouTube and the internet. Um, we finally have a face behind the the monotone voice on my usual videos. Um, yes, I'm wearing an eye patch. I'm not a pirate and this is my wife. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm making a video to talk about uh, the stroke that I had last week. Um, I just got out of the hospital last night and I'm kind of bored and feeling useless. And I just had to go get a scrotal imaging done where they do an ultrasound of my ball sack. Um, not sure what this this video is going to be rated, but I imagine it's going to be fairly adult. So if you're under the age of 18, you might want to go uh, cry to your parents and tell them that the weird man on YouTube is making bad videos again. Um, so yeah, so uh, a week ago. No, six days ago. I don't even know what today is. It's the 19th. So May 13th, 2020, about 9.30 in the morning. Um, I was buying some sand. We're, we're putting in a pool, and I'm probably not going to do a video about that. Um, and I'm, I am I paid the receipt. I, I paid the ticket with my credit card because um, we're kind of tracking how much money I spent on this crazy unnecessary expense that I didn't want to pay for. It was her idea. Um, yeah, anyway, so I, I signed my ticket. I of my I just felt my eyes cross. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I'm like looking, you know, I'm trying to trying to look around. I'm trying to break the cross eye. Like they just involuntarily crossed. And I'm seeing like double vision. Um, as you can see, my eyes are probably still a little jacked up. But um, I had like double vision. Couldn't break it. And so they were like they were like just looking at my nose um, both eyes um, with with a force that I could not break um, and so I kind of like took a second I closed my eyes try to like shake the marbles around a little bit open my eyes and they were still crossed so I closed my eyes and I was like looking up and that's usually what I do is I'll look look up I'll look down cross my eyes and then and then look down and kind of break them but I couldn't move couldn't move my eyes so no matter what I did um, I was trying to like focus on crossing them and then uncrossing them kind of like like this and then looking away no matter what I did I could not get my eyes to stop being crossed and so um, after a few minutes of this um, I'm, I'm kind of a guy that has to like you know just accomplish the mission at, at just about any cost um, I, I was thinking to myself, well, how am I going to get home? What am I going to do? I'm only a couple miles away from the house. How am I going to go? Um, and I was like, well, if I close one eye and I look, uh, I have no depth perception and it's still kind of weird and shaky. Um, but I can still kind of see what's going on and get an, get an idea of what's, what's actually happening and what's coming down the road here. And so, so I made the decision. Uh, I made the decision that myself and my 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 four-year-old son, uh, who was in the car with me, I was like, ah, oh, we'll probably be best served by um, just driving home. Um, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to focus here, and my phone is a little messed up, so it's it's not a me problem. <laughs> it is a me problem. I need to get my dang phone fixed. That's a you problem. Anyway, so. Um, so what I did was I decided um, I was going to drive back to my house um, with by by just using my right eye. So I looked. I didn't see anybody coming down the road at me. I turned right into the roadway. And um, as I was driving, I, I made it about a half a mile. Um, but as I was driving, I passed out. And um, I started to leave the roadway, started hitting like some ruts on the side of the road. And where I live, there's um, all kinds of uh, drainage and agriculture and just all kinds of waterways and stuff like that. So um, the road that I was driving on has a steep crown to it and a steep curve, curb um, that kind of like leads into a little bit of a ditch, a drainage ditch. Um, so I left the roadway, I hit the um, ruts in the road and um, as, as I tapped the brakes, I, I didn't slam the brakes. I, I, I remember feeling my foot slightly on the brakes and the rumble of the road. Um, and as I touched the brakes, it just sucked me off of the road. That's why it's so important 
if you're doing any sort of performance driving, you lose control. You never ever use the brakes. Um, I wasn't doing performance driving. I was just being an idiot trying to make it home. Uh, I wasn't driving too fast for the conditions or anything like that. But I began to um, get pulled onto the roadway and I made the decision to use the brakes. And when I did that, it locked up the, the wheels on the right side of the vehicle and it just completely sucked me off the road. Um, towing 4,000 pounds of sand and a trailer. I'm very fortunate I didn't jackknife and flip or, or just something really stupid like that because what I did was a really stupid move to even drive drive to begin with. Bad idea. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, there's another truck. Achoo! Whoa! So, we're good. My wife almost crashed. She's not having a stroke. She's just a bad driver because she's a woman. What? Yes. Um... I'm just joking. Not all women are bad drivers, just the vast majority. Uh -huh. So, got a little mark from shaving right there. Um, so, what's going on here? So, uh, I kind of woke up a little bit on the side of the road. Um, there was a tree smashed into the windshield of my, my truck. Um, I looked back to my son, who was sitting there wondering, what the heck is this crazy cracker doing? Um, and I started talking to him a little bit. Hey, Cole, are you okay? Yeah, Dad, I'm okay. Okay, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You know what happened? We hit a tree, Dad. Okay, we hit a tree. So let me get out and kind of assess the damage. Um, these decisions that led up to that weren't great decisions, but, you know, I was just trying to accomplish the mission. And um, so the, the resident of the house I crashed in front of, he came out and, and didn't confront me, but he was asking me, hey, man, are you okay? What's going on? Hey, you know what? I'm I'm uh, I'm not feeling too good. I just crashed into your tree here, man. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, you know, we'll get the heck out of here as soon as I can. Um, so I didn't have any broken glass or anything, which is a good thing. I got out of my vehicle and I kind of assessed the scene, um, and everything looked fine. You know, I was from a from a uh, from a working standpoint, so it looked like my vehicle was fine. I didn't have any flat tires. Nothing was blown out. Um, everything appeared to be as if I could just drive away by on my own power if I could get out. So I got back in my truck. I put it in four-wheel drive, um, four-wheel low, which locks the differentials because um, my vehicle is, is all-wheel drive. Um, so I got put it in four-wheel low. I locked the diffs. I tried to, back, tried to get out of there, and I just couldn't. Um, between the weight of the sand and the rut I was stuck in in the road, I just couldn't get out. So I got out again after a couple minutes and I, I thought to myself like, man, I should probably call my insurance company. So I called up Geico um, and I tried, to. I tried to, no, I actually did. So I called up Geico and I, I had a really hard time dialing the number. I dialed the number like three or four times, 100-841-7475. I used to work there, so I have the number memorized. But um, I was sitting there just trying to peck it like a chicken and I messed up a couple times and I finally got it right and I was just really confused like really, really confused. Um, I was just like in the stupor, like what the heck is going on? Why is nothing working? And so I started to call Geico and you know, being mission oriented like I was, I was like, no, um, I need to, this is gonna take way too long for the insurance company. I just need to call my wife, get her to come here. Maybe she can extract the vehicle and then we can move on with life. I'm gonna pause for just a second. Sorry about that, I'm back. We're checking out of the house that we're staying in. So, um, so I tried to get it, I tried to extract the vehicle and I couldn't. So I called my wife, I'm like, hey, you know, just so you know, I got in a car accident, um, leaving the gravel lot. So I need you to come here and help me out. And uh, she's staying in here until she knows she's clear and not sounding bad. <laughs> so she got in the van and she drove over to where I was. And so I'm kind of just sitting there like, oh, wait, like watching my, what's going now on. Now it's my time for the story. It's her time to correct the record. No. So she comes, she comes out. And she's like, "Oh, what are you doing, you no. idiot? What are you doing?" None of that and so happens. she's she's doing that, and then um, one of the other residents comes over, and they're kind of like playing no. off of each other, like escalating, right? Like, "You moron! You're such a crappy driver, and you got the kid there with you." So none of that happened. Did the resident did not come out. So I came to the car and I opened up the door, and Cain was sitting there, like, like cross-eyed, and he just had huge beads of sweat, like all over his face like it like it was very weird looking. my one dead eye <laughs> and um and i said are you okay like what's happening and he i can't remember what he actually said but as soon as he started talking 
it looked like his like lip was like this. He looked like like Two Face, you know, whatever. Mm, Two Face. And I said to From him, Batman. and I said, Cain, I think you're having a stroke. I'm like, I'm gonna call 911, you know. And I looked back at Cole. I was like, Cole, are you okay? And Cole said he was okay. And somebody else had already. I think the guy whose business we were in front of, he had called 911. I'm pretty sure. And so the ambulance was there within like less than a minute of me getting off the phone because they already mm. knew about it. So they had already sent somebody. And uh, okay. Then Cain got We're out of the car. The video. This is my video, not your video. No, no, this is the last part because this is the last part I remember. So then Cain got out. He said he wanted to get to the van because he wanted to be somewhere colder. Super and so hot. he got out of the Too Aspen and somehow got over to the van. I didn't watch him because I was trying to get Cole out of the back seat because Cole's door wouldn't open. And um, now continue on. Oh, okay. So um, she came over and was like, what the F are you doing? Like, you're not right. Something's wrong with you. So I had done like a self-assessment for a stroke before I even left the uh, gravel place. Um, and this is where it's like really important to like not assess yourself because you're not a really good judge of your own capabilities and stuff like that. Like, um, you see, I keep blinking and I have this pirate patch and stuff like that. And it may not be totally noticeable, but, um, I don't have control over my eyes anymore as a result of this stroke. So my eyes, um, my eye, everything I see is double right now. I'm looking at the phone. The phone is double. Um, so I have this eye patch that the nurse made me, um, who, uh, you know, to, to help me through just normal situations walking around. Um, I have no more depth perception. I can't control my eyes. Um, basically what I, what happened was I had a clot that traveled from somewhere in my body up into my brain. Um, and there's a structural defect in my brain, um, that caused this blockage. Um, and it just killed, um, the, the thalamus, um, whatever the thalamus, thalamus by my neocortex, um, so, so they showed me all the images and stuff. I'm going to try to get copies of the images. Maybe I can put it up on the YouTube. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so I had a, uh, so I had this, this thing happen and you know, I'm like, you, like when you see those PSAs and stuff for strokes and you're kind of like, Hey, what the heck? You know, they, they talk about, um, you have, uh, like either a droop or a sag, like in your space um, you can't control, you can't smile, you know, but I was smiling, smiling in the mirror. And I'm like, you know, am I having a stroke? Like almost immediately, as soon as my eyes crossed and I was like, I can't, you know, I can't control them. I can't, I can't uncross my eyes or whatever. Um, I, I went to my mirror and I'm, and I'm looking and I, I could see my eyes were crossed and I could see, you know, something wasn't right there. So I tried to smile. There's no problem whatsoever with smiling, um, the whole time. Um, so I tried smiling, nothing, uh, no problems. I could smile just fine. I was like, Hey, I got these pearly whites. I paid a lot of money for, <laughs> um, tried blowing, no problem with blowing. Um, you know how, when you go to the dentist and you get Novocaine and you can't smile, you can't do anything and you're just frozen and you try to blow and you just look like a MacGuffin. So I couldn't do that right. Uh, I didn't have a problem with that. Didn't have a problem with anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I did feel really confused. So that was a stroke symptom. And, um, <clears throat> uh, but that was the only, that was like pretty much the only symptom I had. So, um, my wife was like, I think you're having a stroke. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm having a stroke. And then the Amber Lamp showed up and they're like, Hey, you know, how much have you had to drink today? What drugs are you on? I'm like, what? Like nothing and nothing. What are you talking about? Um, you know, to them, I was just some dip tard who had a deuce. Um, so... I was like, no, nothing. Like, I don't do drugs. I don't do anything. And then they did it. And they're like, okay, I follow my eyes. And I was having a hard time. Or follow my finger, you know. Um, so I was having a hard time with that. Um, and then they're like, smile for me. Blow. Um, raise up your arms. I raise up my arms. Like, yeah, you're not having a stroke. I don't know what I don't know what these people are talking about. Right? So um, I ended up hopping on a gurney, getting strapped in. Um, they, they took me over to the hospital, the local hospital. Everything that I remember them saying, hey, this guy's not having a stroke. Um, he's negative stroke. It's, it's something else. Um, and I get to the local hospital and, um, a couple of my buddies from church are there waiting for me. Um, and you know, they, they're, they're trying to help me out and stuff like that. And I ended up, um, crashing out. So, um, they they, 
came to this determination like, hey, you know what, this dude actually is having a stroke. So um, they, they had me strapped to the gurney and they put me over on my side and everything. I just remember having my phone with me and I kept my phone really tight to me and they, they turned me onto my side, onto my stomach. And um, at some point, my wife's gonna make fun of me now. Um, they're like, hey man, we have to give you this aspirin to like, to, to get whatever's wrong with you like whatever clot you have or whatever to break it loose we got to give you this this aspirin and it's a suppository and I'm like what and I just remember feeling him like grabbing my leg and spreading my cheek and the next thing I know I'm singing Moon River like Chevy Chase I was like ooh in the in the ambulance did um, that happen in the ambulance that I guess I don't know so that happened I thought that happened completely like violated um <laughs> You know, your whole sense of humanity is just gone when some paramedic has a lubed up, greased up finger up your, your booty hole. Um, and, I, and I don't hold anything against these guys. They're just doing their jobs. They, they're, they were supposed to know that my butt is next only, but I had a suppository aspirin, booty aspirin, completely not fun. Um, at that point, I really just lost it. And I mean, not as in lose my mind and started acting crazy, but I lost it. Oh, there's my eye open. Now everything's double again. Um, so I lost it and I just lost control over myself and um, I ended up falling out. <clears throat> so I almost died. Um, they ended up having to call an air ambulance and I got life lighted. Um, I live about 100 miles away from any meaningful um, health care. So um, on, the am on the ambulance ride out, the helicopter ride out, I don't remember a thing. Um, I crashed out and they were just trying to revive me. Um, but you know, I almost died. I ended up getting flown to, uh, UCSD La Jolla, um, their, their intensive care unit. Um, and I got some pretty intensive care. Um, so they, they brought me back from the brink. Um, I was on all kinds of IVs and stuff like that. And, you know, I was a, I was a functioning body, um, as far as they were concerned, but, um, they needed to know the extent of the damage. So, um, for my first night there, Wednesday all the way through Thursday into Friday, um, I don't really even remember Friday, pardon me, I don't even really remember Thursday, um, they just came in and they would try to wake me up and I would just remember being so, so, so tired and, uh, they would come in and they would, they would like try to, like, try to stir me and shake me and pretty much the only way they could wake me up was they'd had to do these sternum rubs, they just get, grab their knuckles and they just wrap you on the sternum or wrap you on the chest and they rub really hard until you, until it causes you to wake up. Um, very painful. And so every, every few hours, I just, I just remember just being repeatedly woken up. It's like, Hey, 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 what's your name? Where are you? What happened to you? What's today? And like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And they're like, okay, grab my fingers. You know, so I, um, so they're doing this. They're not saying pull my finger, they're saying grab my fingers. So doing this and they're doing neurological exams on you and they're like, okay, pull towards you. I have to pull their their hands towards me, you know. Okay, push it away, and I'd push it away. And you know, the more they did it, the more violent I would get because um, I really just wanted to be left alone. And it literally felt like just every two minutes they were coming in, bothering me. Um, but it was more like every few hours, um, and that was just them coming to check and make sure that I wasn't a vegetable uh, because I had such a traumatic experience. Um, and it wasn't until Friday that I could actually have any meaningful uh, conversation with anyone. So I finally woke up, finally like, hey, where the heck is my phone? Got a hold of my wife. Um, she brought me my phone. I had like 60 text messages waiting for me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, are you okay? I was like, yeah, you know, what did she say? So I had to go look on social media and, and show enough. Um, she, uh, you know, she, she had spilled the beans to everyone, you know, my circle of, of people um, that I had had a stroke and that, you know, not, not the extent of the, the booty aspirin and stuff like that. Um, that I'm, I'm, you know, obviously very traumatized about that, but I'm not really talking about it too much on, on Facebook. Um, you know, cause it's not something I want to like relive and, and just have to think about and hash out in my mind over what did they do to me? You know, with the aspirin, you know, how big was it and how deep did they actually go? You know, was it like, was it like gov being a government employee where, you know, they, they don't ask how deep or how big you want it. It's just like, okay, man, you're getting the whole fist. We decide you're getting the whole fist, so you're getting the whole fist, right? Um, oh, and, and there just so happens to be a piece of aspirin accompanying this. I don't know. Um, it's happened to me in the past, you know, being a government employee, 
um, you know, you work, you work really hard and you're as ethical and honest as you can be. And the government just comes around and says, Hey, you know what? You're done, buddy. You're dead. And that's it. There's no fighting it. Right. You just kind of have to roll over and accept it and, and, uh, relax the perineum as they say in Lamaze classes. So, um, 20 minutes and 30 seconds deep. Um, end of the day, I had a stroke. It sucked. Um, they came and they expect, explained to me what happened, you know, at the base of my, um, where my spinal cord goes into the brain and my thalamus is what it's called. I have a structural defect where I have two blood vessels that are supposed to provide blood to your, to the thalamus. And I have one blood vessel that branches off and provides blood to both. And so somehow a clot made it up there and, um, so, uh, the clot made it up there, it clogged it and it, it just killed that part of the brain, um, which I'm very fortunate as the doctors explained, it's like a deep, deep bruise, um, in that location. So the clot went up there. It didn't actually rupture the blood vessel. Um, but my blood, my, my, um, my anticoagulants, my natural anticoagulants and the booty aspirin attacked the clot, um, kind of righted it without there being any burst, but there's just a dead spot, you know, we'll do the look at this game. You looked, um, so there's a dead spot, you know, probably about the size of a quarter, you know, or maybe a ping pong ball, um, in my brain and that spot controls, um, my vision, my balance, um, a few other things like some psychological things, um, inhibition, you know, I have no inhibition right now. Uh, I just went and had my, my nut sack. Um, they did a, a freaking, uh, ultrasound on it. And this girl's just there juggling my, my balls like, ah, oh, whatever, man. Um, so probably some challenges ahead of me in that respect, but, uh, you know, whatever it is, what it is, it's just life. You got to pick up and move past it. Um, so the, the, the big thing for me in my everyday life is of course going to be watching my mouth and then also, um, you know, depth perception. I cut myself shaving, um, you know, trying to look around without, um, having, having too, having too obvious. I'm just perpetually tired too. I don't think that's a side effect, but, um, there's some, some challenges that await and I'm sure I'm going to have to overcome. Um, but that's well, about it. A quick update, side uh, vision, balance, um, depth perception. I don't have any of that. And then my inhibition, inhibition. I talked about the, um, you, the chick just, about, chick like, just ultrasounded my sack and I was just kind of like, ah, whatever. Just peeling my pants off, whatever. So it's not inhibition like that. It's like inhibition, like, like you don't I give don't an F about nothing. Yeah. He doesn't get, but he's a, he's kind of a douchebag a little bit. Like yeah. a bro. Like no, a, he's like, like a, a jerk. I'm not a jerk. He doesn't want me to touch him. He doesn't want me to like... Be treated like an invalid. No. Like le leading me around like I'm a little kid. Like, hey, come back here, you. Get back in the car. He just starts going off like... <laughs> like I thought he was going to run into the street here. And then he like ran to the side of the street. And then he just stopped and he got in this like... Like baseball, like pitcher's position or whatever or something like no, that. And happened. he's like looking both sides. This is weird. And I'm like, what are you doing? This is weird. He's and like, my oh, glasses, I, don't I don't know. I just can't control it. So, again, there's going to be issues. There's going to be bumps in the road. Um, it's going to be a very, uh, it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I just need to take a nap. That's all. So we got released. Um, we're roaming around the streets in La Jolla right now, La Jolla, California. Um, that's another rant for another day about how I ended up here, because you know, um, you know, I'm actually in federal law enforcement, and if you get injured um, as part of your job, they're like, hey, let's just keep this guy alive until we're no longer liable for him. But if you're like an illegal alien, they're like, oh my gosh, a detainee. Like we need to give the best possible care to these people um, and make sure that they come out just hunky-dory and, and you know, no permanent effects. So it's like, you know, somebody jumps off the border wall and breaks their leg in their back. We're spending, you know, millions upon millions of dollars to get them right and to get them rehabilitated so they can jump over the fence without any problems in the future. Um, however, if you're one of us, 
they're just like ah if they die they die so somewhere somewhere along the lines they they probably thought that i was um you know a bad guy or or a detainee or an illegal alien so they sent me here to get literally the absolute best care possible and imaginable which which i'm going to pay for dearly um in in the coming months i have zero doubt about that so um you know look for a video in the future uh, i'll be showcasing my house for sale um under threat of foreclosure what? or something um because you know just the the crushing weight of um medical bills for me is i'm gonna have to renounce my citizenship and become an illegal alien or something my wife's looking at me all crazy it's the truth it's the way it is so if it isn't the way it is i'll, I'll retract that statement that's like uh four minutes of this video that i'll have to retract and delete and edit um but but no that's probably what's gonna happen so thank you very much um that was my stroke journey uh right now it's day six it's tuesday i had it on wednesday day six yeah yep it's day six so i've had it for six days and i don't know three hours or so um but i made it made it through the other side most of my dignity intact except for Good S sweaty Vaseline covered booty okay. aspirin gross it's 100 degrees where I live right now I think I wasn't sweaty I was having cold sweats and nervous sweats anyway thank you for watching uh, horrible video I know thank you and uh, post any questions you guys may have about um, the stroke itself the confusion how it felt um, double vision um how these guys are allowed to just do whatever they want to you uh, once once you have a stroke. Or how I was asked a thousand times what drugs or alcohol I'd been taking, even though I hadn't taken any. Because that's what it does to you. Anyway, again, thank you. Bye.